We start live at five now with breaking news tonight. A woman and girl found dead inside a home on the city's northeast side. Here's what we can tell you. Police do believe this was sadly a murder suicide. Fox 59's Haley Bull. She is live at the scene right now. She has the very latest for us. Haley, what can you tell us? Yeah, guys, police say this is a tragic scene. We're right off of 42nd in North Sherman. I'm going to step out of the way to give you a better look. You can see this is still active, still early in the investigation. Officers are looking into these townhomes. Crime Lab is here investigating at this point. Officers say they got the call around 2.30 this afternoon. They say family members came over to check on them after they hadn't heard from them for a few days. Maintenance let them inside the home. That's when police say they found the woman and girl upstairs. It's sad and it's tragic, especially when you're dealing with the loss of young life. However, our officers were pros and we work every crime scene as a professional. Now, police say they believe this is the woman's residence, but that's something they're still working to confirm. The relationship between the woman and the girl and their identities are not known at this point. Next, a coroner will determine a cause of death. Right now, police are calling this a death investigation. Keep in mind, though, this is still very early in the investigation. Officers are still working to piece together what exactly led up to this and what exactly transpired here. Now, another important thing to note is police say they are not looking for anyone. They do not believe there is any threat to the public here. We talked to some neighbors. They say normally this is an area where kids are outside playing. That's generally pretty quiet. So this comes as a surprise here. As you can see, a lot of police activity around their homes tonight. We'll keep you updated, though, as we learn more and the situation develops. For now, reporting live on the northeast side, Haley Bull, Fox 59 News. All right, Haley, thank you. We will check back later this evening. Our other big story right now, live at five, oppressive heat and humidity all across Indiana. Take a look at these temperatures tonight. Yeah. Up over 90 degrees yeah. downtown. We're all just going to try and stay yeah. cool as the next few days unfold. The weather authority Brian Wilkes is looking at how long this is going to last. Brian, it looks like it's got some real staying power. We've been advertising that for days that this hot weather would likely last all the way into this upcoming weekend, uh, not uh, uh, next weekend. Rather, it was a week ago today that we had advertised the heat index that would hit 100 degrees and we did it. So here we are a real summer feel in central Indiana. Isn't this what you were waiting for? Perhaps if you love summer activities, you've just got to be careful because the high levels of humidity uh, can wear you down real quick. Now we've got a quiet radar, a warm day. Temperatures have gone up, but so has the humidity. Our temperature downtown is at 92 degrees. We've hit 90 in Indianapolis. Heat advisory is in effect and those heat indices, they're coming up as well. Our temperature at the airport has been uh, hovering right around 90 degrees in most reporting stations as well, but that number has gone up. The dew point temperature now is as high as you would find in Miami, Florida. In fact, even higher in Bloomington and Lafayette, and that's producing a heat index now that's gone up over 100 degrees. It feels like it's 103 in Lafayette, a 102 reading now in Peru. It stays stuffy tonight. Look at this number staying well above 80 degrees through 11 o'clock at night, and that means the heat index in Indianapolis will be at or above 90 degrees through midnight and the heat. It's just getting going. It'll be hotter on Saturday. Small storm chance is in the forecast as well. This extended spell of hot weather, well, it's going to be here for a little while, and I'll show you how long coming up. All right, Brian, thank you. This heat wave could be a very dangerous situation, especially if you're not prepared. Fox 59's Kelly Rinke spoke with doctors about how to stay cool, and she's live with their warning tonight for this warm, warm weekend. It's hot out there, Kelly. Oh my gosh, definitely. That's an understatement. This is definitely going to be your friend for the next couple of days, especially for people who have to be outdoors for their job. And doctors say heat exhaustion can actually happen when temperatures are just 80 degrees. It's a heat that sizzles. Luis Ramirez hunches over a grill in his food truck downtown, serving up tacos on a hot summer day that feels even hotter for him and his crew. Maybe another 10 degrees more hotter than outside. And it didn't help when their AC broke yesterday. My son and me, pretty much we turn in times in the grills because 15, 20 minutes, and how about standing in front of an open fire oven that reaches 900 degrees? It's pretty hot. That's part of Taquari Dockery's job today. Mainly we drink a lot of water, 
We got two AC units up here. Indianapolis EMS says heat related calls are up this summer. They see nine patients a day on average if the temperature is 90 degrees or higher. So if you decide to go outside, doctors are urging you to prepare to avoid heat stroke. You start to feel you start to feel a little nauseous, kind of a little bit weak and almost dizzy, and those are really the warning signs that like it's time to get out of the heat. Dr. Butch Humbert with Eskenazi Health suggests to hydrate and wear light-colored clothing. If you don't need to be outside in the heat, stay out. Unfortunately, that's not an option for Luis. So his team bought a new air conditioning system, hoping to cool down this summer sizzle. Thanks, guys. We don't have the problem yet. Yeah, and doctors say that misting fans are another good way to cool off. And depending on the severity, doctors say that heat exhaustion can be life threatening. So you want to make sure you pay attention to those warning signs. Reporting on the northwest side, Kelly Rinke, Fox 59 News. Kelly, thank you. You can download our Weather Authority app to get the latest on this heat wave. Get forecast information wherever you are, day or night, and severe weather alerts sent right to your phone. More breaking news to tell you about right now. Former American Senior Community CEO James Burkhart just sentenced to nine and a half years behind bars. That sentence just coming down. He's one of the four men accused of making millions of dollars in an elaborate fraud scheme. Burkhart pleaded guilty earlier this year. He made more than $16 million in illegal profits through health care organizations. Today in court, Burkhart said he apologized to loved ones, friends and ASC employees. He asked for a proper punishment, but also asked for a second chance. The judge then said Burkhart had, quote, no excuse for becoming a criminal. Our Gabby Gonzalez was actually in court today when the sentence was handed down. We're going to hear from her coming up in just a moment, so stay with us for that. Right now, two Hamilton County law enforcement officers are accused of making prank 911 calls. Pretty disturbing here. Court documents show David Needham and Bradley Gorgas made those fake calls to the dispatcher on the same night in May. Needham is a Hamilton County Sheriff's deputy. Gorgas is a Cicero police officer. Needham is currently on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. Make sure you stay with Fox 59. We will continue to get you the latest on this developing story as well. The latest now, three months of police officers are on paid administrative leave tonight after a police-involved shooting. Muncie police fired those shots after they say 56-year-old Gary Mort set his home on fire, then walked outside with a gun and pointed it in their direction. Officers say he refused to drop the weapon and they were forced to fire shots. I saw probably three or four officers back up and they all were shooting. There was a lot. There were uh, probably 13, 15 shots. Mort is currently in stable condition. State police have taken over the case and will interview the three officers who are now on paid administrative leave. It's a Fox 59 crime tracker alert right here. $10,000 worth of fireworks stolen from this store in Castleton. The store manager at USA Fireworks is telling police she came into work yesterday. She found the door opened and many of the firework displays ransacked. She says the thief left behind an Indiana ID card. Police say they also found pry marks on the door and they are reviewing security footage right now from nearby businesses. Several other USA fireworks locations have been broken into this month as well. New information tonight. The NFL just suspended Colts running back Robert Turbin for the first four games of the 2018 season. Turbin tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. The running back apologized this afternoon on Twitter. His tweet reads in part, Unfortunately, I have made a mistake, a mistake that will not only have personal consequences, but will also affect the Colts organization, an organization that I'm extremely appreciative to be a part of. We have his full statement posted at fox59.com, and of course, we'll have more information coming up later tonight in sports. Heartbreak this evening after five people were murdered inside a Maryland newspaper. The disturbing actions the gunmen took to try and kill as many people as possible, say the police. A basketball camp proving more than just jump shot techniques. See how they're helping kids improve on and off the court. It's back for the first time in about a week and a half. The temperatures reach the 90 degree mark. We start a brand new heat wave. Boy, we're not even into July already. 11 90 degree days and our fourth heat index day over 100. It's not going to back off anytime soon. The sizzling weekend forecast is just minutes away.
Right now we want to get you more on that breaking news we told you about a few minutes ago. The former CEO of American Senior Communities sentenced today to nine and a half years in prison for a multi-million dollar kickback scheme. James Burkhardt made more than $16 million in illegal profits through health care organizations. Fox 59's Gabby Gonzalez was in court today. She shows us what happened. Yeah, the judge being very clear with James Burkhardt saying he had no excuse whatsoever to become a criminal as he led Indiana's largest nursing home chain. Now, this sentence that was handed down much longer than the four years his attorneys asked for. Now, take a look at this video, some sketches from inside the courtroom. So many people showing up for this hearing and had to be moved to a larger courtroom. The assistant U.S. attorney emphasizing that greed motivated Burkhardt to steal more and more money to fund a lavish life with vacation homes, private jets flights, and expensive jewelry. This investigation dates back to 2015 when a whistleblower came forward and the FBI raided the homes and offices of Burkhardt and his co-defendants. The evidence showed he was faking invoices and funneled money through sham companies. Burkhardt pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit fraud, conspiracy to violate the health care anti-kickback statute, and money laundering. U.S. Attorney Josh Minkler said this case was about a violation of trust. The people in those nursing homes were just commodities to him, commodities to make money. There are other greedy, corrupt individuals out there to exploit the public trust. And much like Jim Burkhart, they have no internal controls. And you can see here Burkhardt's family leaving the federal courthouse today. It was an emotional scene as they gathered outside of the courtroom after learning about the sentence. Lots of hugs and tears there. Now, we've also learned that the defendants in this case will have to pay restitution of just over $12 million. They still have to figure out exactly how much is left to pay in that. The other co-defendants in this case will be sentenced next month. Reporting downtown, I'm Gabby Gonzalez. Back to you. Gabby, thank you. Disgraced gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser faces more charges this evening, this time in Texas. He's facing sexual assault charges in connection with a child who attended the Caroli Ranch, where many young gymnasts trained. Some reports indicate Nasser could be linked to six gymnasts in Texas. Martha and Bella Caroli, the owners of that ranch, are cooperating with investigators and are not facing any charges at this time. A memorial is growing tonight for the people murdered at the Capitol Gazette newspaper in Maryland. Five people were killed when a gunman opened fire in that building yesterday. The man accused in that attack is being held without bond this evening on five counts of first degree murder. Prosecutors say he hunted down those employees at the office of the Capitol Gazette yesterday afternoon, opening fire with a shotgun. Those inside say he barricaded the back door so they could not escape. Police also say he planned to escape when police arrived, but he was found hiding under a desk. I'll, I'll say this. The fellow was there to kill as many people as he could kill. Police also say the gun that was used was a bump, a pump action, excuse me, a pump action shotgun that was obtained legally. They also say back in 2013, there was a police investigation to threats the suspect, the sus suspect allegedly made uh, to the newspaper. However, the paper declined to press criminal charges at the time. The man is not cooperating with police. We want to focus on the victims tonight. We are learning much more about the people who were killed in this shooting. Robert Hyacin was 59 years old. He'd been an assistant editor at the paper since 2010. Gerald Fishman was 61 years old. He'd been at the paper 25 years and worked as the editorial page editor. He was admired by a number of elected officials there in Maryland. John McNamara worked at the paper for more than 20 years in different roles. He loved covering sports and even wrote two books. Wendy Winters was an editor and a community reporter. The 65-year-old mother also volunteered with the Girl Scouts and the Red Cross. And Rebecca Smith was just 34 years old and just joined the newspaper last year as a sales assistant. Her co-workers remember her as a very thoughtful person. New at 5 right now, Fox 59 has taken you to Indy's Brookside community. We have shown you the major resurgence and revitalization in process. Well now, one summer program is also doing its part through sports. Indy Sports Central's Lara Overton shows us how play-based therapy is working. 
throughout the clinic today. When I say to the center circle, everybody comes here, okay? A basketball clinic in the Brookside neighborhood is coaching more than just jump shots. What we learned in working with the children in our community is that especially from a high poverty uh, neighborhood like ours, the kids suffer from trauma. And so play-based therapy actually helps them relieve that trauma mentality. This basketball camp is just one of many free summer play-based programs for kids kindergarten to sixth grade. Don't say can't. You can't do something, just say, can, can you help me with this? Or I'm not sure if I know how to do this. The kids' development is measured beyond their improvement on the court. I'm not really a good basketball player, but I've gotten used to it since they like teach you and show you how to do it. So I do a lot of stuff here. That's why I love coming here. We use something called the Devereaux assessment, where we're able to observe whether they're becoming better teammates, if they're growing in confidence, uh, if they're being able to communicate more clearly uh, to those around them. And out of that, we're seeing 80% of the kids that we work with are growing. Brookside Community Development was recently awarded a $100,000 grant from the Impact 100 organization, which will go toward expanding its programming for middle and high school students and offer more opportunities for mentoring, academic support, and job training. A lot of these kids have come up through our elementary after school program already. So what you'll see is that we're able to actually hire these teenagers back on to serve as the coach mentors with our younger kids. We think it's going to be a great opportunity to infuse in our younger kids, but also to develop hopefully the most employable teenagers uh, that are our city sees. From Indy's East Side, Lara Overton, Indy Sports Central. Great program it there, is. no doubt. Um, weather today, you know, great if you like hot weather. It yeah. is definitely toasty. This is not the weather you're going to want to go outside and play a three or four games not of all basketball day. or tennis or maybe you know, like maybe some breaks. A few minutes of basketball <laughs> That's about and then it. take a break. <laughs> or maybe oh. maybe maybe nine holes of golf today. Yeah. Ryan. But yeah. we will swim some laps in in the pool. Absolutely. Today. That we can do. And and seriously, age <laughs> does have a lot to do with it, Dan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you I'll youngsters could get out and play with this yeah, stuff, yeah. right? But yes, it's a great it's great advice to not only, like Fanchon said, find someone with a pool or get into the pool, but we want you to take it easy here. It's definitely some typical summer heat. Uh, don't want to over-exaggerate the idea that it's it's almost July and we've got some hot weather, but we do want to caution, and here's why, because heat can sneak up on you, and unfortunately, we will have people that uh, leave the windows uh, up and maybe perhaps even leave children in the back seat or pets. Uh, just some silly things happen during the hot weather, and we have to emphasize you've got to take it easy. You've got to take your breaks because it does sneak up on you. On the other hand, too, we want you to enjoy some of the summer weather, but just take it easy and have that glass of lemonade. This is the view from Westfield. It's warm. It's sticky. You can see the humidity out there and the radar is quiet as well. We top the 90 degree mark again. Now this is 11 times we've reached 90 so early in the season, the most since 2012. And remember that summer we had. We've got a lot more in the way of rainfall in the last few weeks. 3.9 inches, almost four inches down uh, throughout the month of June. Incidentally, it is the driest June to date in about about five years, but because we added moisture into these soils and we're heating things up again, first 90 in a week and a half, we are getting the heat index again up over 100 degrees. Now look at the 90 degree temperatures. Kokomo 93, Anderson 91. Air conditioning is a humming around central Indiana, but that heat index has gone up substantially on a south wind. Look at that dew point at 74. That would rival a typical afternoon in Miami, Florida. So we're not often accustomed to as well as having this extended spell of heat. We could potentially put Put together eight, maybe nine, 10 days of days at or above 90 degrees. We're at 89 officially. The dew point number is as high as 77 in Lafayette, 76 in Peru. So it's thick tropical air that's been coming up to in the last 24 hours. And therefore, the heat index at one point had reached 100 in Indianapolis. It feels like 100 in Bloomington. Bigger numbers up over north central Indiana and Kokomo and Lafayette. Hot numbers, the temperatures continue to rise to near 100 out in parts of Kansas, and as we expand the view, Note the lack of cloud cover, and for that matter, even showers and thunderstorms. The heat continues to move in, so it's an upper level high, a hot dome, and look at these heat advisories. We have expanded now from a dozen states to nearly 20 various states under some form of warm weather advisory, updated to an excessive heat warning over northern Indiana. The heat advisory in central Indiana continues through Saturday afternoon. I want to make an emphasis here, too, that Sunday afternoon has the potential as well to 
to have a heat index up over 100 degrees. So this may need to be extended into Sunday because we may not see any shower and thunderstorm activity for a little while. The heat index Saturday, check this out. In the morning, it'll already at 8 a.m. feel like it's nearly 80 degrees. By lunchtime, it will be back up to near 100 and stay feeling like it's 100 degrees through 7 o'clock Saturday night. Watch what happens on Sunday afternoon as well. Heat index once again, still right around 100 degrees. Now the rain chances are very minimal underneath these hot domes or domes of high pressure that move in during the summer months. So as we stay hot, we stay humid, the rain chances remain minimal. Tonight a stuffy night, tomorrow another hot day at 93 degrees. The heat index could top out at 105. Still have a potential heat index of 100 to 105 again on Sunday. Our best chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms could come in well after dark Sunday and linger into early Monday, but the rain chances remain slim and the temperatures remain warm all the way through the 4th of July. All right, Brian, thank you. This is pretty disturbing. 97% of us aren't washing our hands properly. Tonight, the common mistake you could be making that could eventually make you sick. Plus, a homeless couple in Seattle gets a ticket courtesy of the city. Gets out of a ticket. Why the city uh, paid for that flight out of town? And the Indiana Bicentennial Fountain is broken already. So who's going to have to pay for it? I'll tell you next. The USDA is reminding all of us to wash our hands thoroughly. Listen to this. Turns out 97% of the time we are not doing it correctly. They conducted a study that finds only 3% of people followed all of the necessary steps to properly clean your hands. The biggest problem is people not washing their hands long enough. You are supposed to do it for a minimum of 20 seconds. Other mistakes include not getting your hands wet or failing to even use soap. So be sure to be extra thorough, especially if you're preparing food for the 4th of July parties with your friends and family. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, a group of homeless people recently made a large makeshift encampment right in front of the Space Needle. And now the couple in charge has been given two plane tickets to leave town. The camp was for a shelter and also a form of protest. They refused any help from the city of Seattle. 
we can provide something better for ourselves than at this point the city can provide for us. Then the city stepped up and gave them two plane tickets for her and her husband to relocate to Kansas at the city's expense. Turns out a contractor set aside the money to relocate people who have confirmed family in another city. However, a lot of other homeless people are upset about this. Meantime, the city just passed a law to create 500 new shelter beds. Well, a lot of us will be heading to the pool or to the lake during this hot, hot weekend. Yes, we will. Be sure you and your family are safe when you do. We're going to show you what you can do to prevent your children from drowning. And new life for the Coca-Cola plant on Mass Ave. Tonight, the big plans for this major development in our city. Well, if you're just joining us, we're following some breaking news live at five. A woman and a young girl found dead today inside a home on the northeast side. Right now, we can tell you police suspect this is a murder suicide. Sadly, it happened right off 42nd and North Sherman. Officers got the call around 2:30 this afternoon. Yeah, they say family members came over to check on them after they hadn't heard from them for a few days. Police say they are not looking for any suspects at this time. Of course, stay with Fox 59 on air and online for the very latest on this tragic story tonight on the northeast side. Also watching our weather closely. Look at this. A lot of families today heading to the Splash Park just trying to keep cool. Oh, yeah. There's a heat advisory in effect right now through tomorrow. Doesn't that look so refreshing? It does look good on a day like this. <laughs> yeah. The weather authority's Brian Wilkes. He is showing us how hot we could actually get. Brian. Oh my goodness. The 92 degree temperature downtown is one of the hotter so far this afternoon. Uh, the thermometer is at or around 90 pretty much area wide. The heat index that's going to vary a little bit because of the amounts of moisture in the atmosphere. You can actually see it. You can feel it. That's for sure. Look at this view as we look toward downtown Indianapolis. It is thick with tropical air. That is haze hanging overhead. That is all the water molecules essentially in a gas form. So you've got that tropical feel overhead. That's the gas, the dew point 
number that we always talk about that's so uncomfortable. When that number goes up and it's high, right now it would rival that of Miami, Florida. And we don't have the cooling effects of an ocean nearby, do we? Uh, all you can do is go to the splash parks or to the pool or even to a local lake if you can. But please be careful. Uh, we know that there are a lot of folks headed to the water and a lot of folks that may have to work out in this heat. Take numerous breaks. Take it easy. It's a pretty typical summer day. We're not quite to July yet, and we've already had now 11 90 degree days. The heat advisory is in effect through Saturday, and I'm here to caution you. I believe that the heat index will still be as hot as 100 to 105 on Sunday afternoon as well. We'll revisit those advisories in a moment, but right now a temperature that sits at 89 that's up 24 hours ago from about four or five degrees. It's this dew point that continues to climb now into the upper 70s as that dew point rises. There we go. There's the heat index at 98 Indianapolis 103 Lafayette. It's uncomfortably warm and it will stay stuffy throughout the night and the rain chances remain small and we are not going to get out of this heat wave for quite some time. Uh, this should extend right through the 4th of July and into next weekend. Uh, is there any signs of cooling relief underway? We'll take a look at that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Brian, thank you. This heat can be dangerous, but it could also take a, an effect on your phone. Some steps you can take to prevent damage include taking it out of your pocket because your body heat prevents it from cooling down. If it starts to get too hot, you can stop using your phone or, or even put it in airplane mode. Don't charge your phone in direct sunlight. And if the phone gets too hot, don't put it in the freezer or anything like that to cool down. It's better to just turn it off and leave it somewhere cool. We also know, Dan, a lot of people may be heading to the pool or the lake this weekend to get a break from the heat. Unfortunately, it only takes a few seconds for a day of fun to become tragic. As you know, already several young children have drowned this year. Fox 59's Alexa Green shows you some safety precautions for you and your family. It's a scene that plays out at pools all throughout the country. Nice. One that can turn tragic in seconds. In Hollywood, we see kids that they're thrashing around and screaming and yelling. In reality, drowning's a very silent death. Kids typically just sink to the bottom, big eyes staring up, looking for help for help that doesn't always come. Which is why rescue and dive crews at the Fishers Fire Department are reminding parents it's their job to help and to keep a close eye on their little ones. Drowning can occur in less than 30 seconds and in less than half an inch of water. Watch your kids. Give them the tools, the knowledge and the education to self-rescue and to swim and stay afloat, but keep an eye on them. At Stony Creek Swim Center in Noblesville, even the tiniest fish are learning to swim from a young age. No matter the age, no matter the skill level, everything is about keeping them completely safe in the pool. And learning to rescue others in case the unthinkable happens. And we want to make sure everybody goes home. We want to make sure that people aren't going through a senseless death that your families are going to live over and over forever. So important to remember those simple precautions. Also today, Eli Lilly opening a brand new facility and bringing some new jobs with it. The research and development facility is called Building 302. You're looking at the ribbon cutting just this morning. Something they say is important as a feature of this building is the fact that it's supposed to be a collaborative work environment between researchers, engineers and biologists. Eli Lilly wants those researchers to come up with new ways to be more efficient when they work. They will primarily be working with small molecules there. Turning a molecule into a medicine is such a complex activity. We need scientists with all sorts of expertise working together closely in a seamless way in order to make this possible. They say this facility will also add more jobs to Indy over the next few years, but they don't have a specific number just yet. A former Coca-Cola bottling plant on Mass Ave is officially becoming what will be known as the Bottle Works District. Construction crews breaking ground on that redevelopment project just today. The project is giving new life to a 12-acre property that's been storing its equipment and school buses for years. When it's all done, there will be a boutique hotel, food hall, retail shopping, offices, and residential living. This is the beginning of a project that will be the destination for not only local Hoosiers, but the 27 million visitors who are looking for something uniquely Indianapolis. Phase one starts today and makes up half of the overall project that's set to be finished in the spring of 2020. Developers are keeping some of the building's historic integrity, including the old Coca-Cola admin building. 
Well, get ready for some major construction chaos when you're heading to and from downtown. Sunday, NDOT will shut down parts of I-65 to repair seven bridges. The I-65 area there will close down completely between Meridian Street and 21st Street. You will need to find a detour, so either 30th Street, Keystone Avenue, or 21st Street would be your best options. The project will also close the southbound lanes of I-65 at I-465, that interchange. Southbound traffic, you will be diverted onto I-465 South or you can use I-865 East. The closures are expected to last for 35 days. A truck slams into the front of a Walmart, shattering windows and doing a lot of damage. Tonight, why police think the driver did it on purpose. And a little boy thinks fast after his house catches fire. What he did to get his brother to safety. And the president of the local police union raising concerns about officers leaving IMPD. Why he says morale is so low right now. A 19 year old man drives his truck right into a Walmart. Look at that. This happened in Texas. And guess what? Police say he did it on purpose. Officers think the man was trying to run over his girlfriend at the time. He was leaving the store with the woman when they started arguing. A concerned customer told the woman to go back inside the store for safety. They went back out and saw the truck speeding right toward them. Thankfully, they jumped out of the way and weren't injured. The man then drove away and was arrested down the road. The damage estimated at half a million dollars. Well, the New York City Police Foundation has established a new scholarship to honor the teenager murdered by accused gang members. That scholarship will provide college tuition assistance to two NYPD explorers 
who graduate high school. 15-year-old Lissandro Guzman Feliz was part of that program. He was dragged out of a store and stabbed earlier this month. Police have arrested eight suspected gang members. They believe the murder was a case of mistaken identity. Wow. Well, a 10-year-old boy saves his younger brother from a house fire in Louisiana. The fire started late in the morning. That 10-year-old boy says he went to wake up his 5-year-old brother. Listen. I tried to, but he wetted me down, so I just tried and shaking him, but I couldn't wake him up, so I just grabbed him. Yeah, he grabbed him and carried his brother to safety. No one was hurt, but the home was completely destroyed, as you just saw. Investigators don't know what started that fire yet, but the fire did spread to another house, but only did minor damage there. Indiana's bicentennial fountain is broken after just one season. So what's wrong with it and who's going to pay for the bill? We'll tell you. Plus, the Smashing Pumpkins throw a huge house party tonight, the big event, and why it has special significance to the band. And a state police carpool karaoke battle is on tonight. You'll see their amazing performances next Live at 5. And Fox 59 needs your help. We are about to build another brand new home for a deserving family. Mark your calendar for July 27th. We will be building the panels of the Habitat home right in our back parking lot. And we do need volunteers. You can choose to be on one of six teams led by our Fox 59 morning crew. You do need to be available from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. on the 27th. And you also need to fill out an entry form with all of your information by going to fox59.com slash habitat. Keeping Indianapolis beautiful by keeping it clean. Today, volunteers joined DPW, the Department of Business and Neighborhood Services, Keep Indianapolis Beautiful, and other city departments for a neighborhood cleanup. And you are looking at the work they did today, just some of it, at least. They spent the morning on Indy's east side picking up trash here in the Martindale Brightwood community. Volunteers say it was probably the biggest amount of garbage they have collected so far. 
At their last sweep, they collected 23 tons of trash. They think they collected at least twice that amount today. Well, it's the end of an era. Every Toys R Us store in the United States closing for good today. The retailer filed for bankruptcy last year and just couldn't bounce back. The website wrote a farewell to its customers on, on the site today, thanking everyone and asking everyone to promise to never grow up. Some employees have staged protests saying they didn't receive a severance. Toys R Us will still have some facilities in other countries, including Canada. It's like a little bit of our childhood. Right. Went away. I don't want to grow up. You know, I'm a Toys R Us, toys kid. Us kid. Yeah. Yeah. All right, time to check out what's trending tonight at Fox59.com. It is your top three for five on this Friday. Number three, the newly reunited Smashing Pumpkins throwing a house party in a California neighborhood. Check this out. Fans at the show actually got to see the band perform some classics and the title track from their new album. Select fans even got the invite. Live Nation put the show on at a house in Studio City. They rented the property and got all the proper permits and they warned neighbors beforehand that things might get a little loud. The house was actually the same place they did one of their videos 20 years ago. The Smashing Pumpkins reunited with three original members to record a new album, Solara. They'll be at Bankers Life Fieldhouse, by the way, in August. It'll be a great show. Mm -hmm. All right, at number two, a Florida deputy jumps into swampy waters to rescue a very frightened dog. Aww. Cody the Boxer went for a little adventure there in the water and got kind of scared. His owner called for help when he heard the dog crying from the other side of the water. So the deputy jumped in and swam out to the dog, oh. bringing him to safety. Look at that. Yes. The dog and his owner, very, very grateful. All right, at number one, a carpool karaoke battle between Indiana State Police. Yeah, we all get to enjoy <laughs> this one. Check it out. Great. Yes. <laughs> they're, really, they're really uh, making their, their mark here, <laughs> aren't they? This all started with a, a tweet from Sergeant Ted Boner in, in Brennan. He was at a uh, Tip a Cop event and said troopers don't dance. So Sergeant John Perrine from Indianapolis, oh. well, he took that as a challenge. Stephen Wells from Versailles doing his car wash, head bob, link sync, and Boehner upping the game with Ice Ice Baby. Perrine and Wayne Township Fire Captain John Pruitt say they're working on their own video and they expect to have that by next week. So we are certainly we are looking, forward to that. looking forward to that. Well, I can tell you one thing. Yeah. We could use some ice ice. We yeah. could. Right Real now, quick though. Mm, I, I'm sure mm. she, she's going to get in our ear and tell us well, to go to weather. But uh, we want to say thanks uh, on right. this. Our five o'clock producers oh, last day, yes. Jennifer. She's the one back there finding all those great stories. She's like always the in top our ear telling five. us. And yes. you know what? Jennifer's so great. She even warns us when things come up we don't like. When I don't like snakes, she warns me She about tells the you don't look right. at the screen. Exactly. She, she is one, one of the finest going. we yeah. work with here. That's and right. she's Absolutely. been with us, I believe, is it six years? Over That's oh, right. six plus? Six, six yeah. years. She just told us you And she's got a baby on the way, yeah. too. That's right. So we are very happy for you. But for us personally, we're sad to see you go. And we wish you the best of luck. Absolutely. Bye, Jen. Love you, Jen. We'll see you soon. <laughs> she's starting the weekend. She says that. <laughs> she's actually not yeah. telling us to wrap it up. That's I right. Know. I don't know. She's still it up right. this time, right? She's like, I don't care. Talk as much as you want. I got a fast button here, Jennifer. I'll keep you on time and get you out the door here to start your weekend. And a weekend that's going to be a hot one as well. We've got humidity on the rise, temperatures on the rise, sunshine is plentiful, and it feels like summer. Summer, summer, summertime. And a heat index to go along with it around 100 degrees. That radar remains quiet. Should we see a major shift in this pattern? We're just starting this uh, a heat dome and hot dome and this heat wave. Uh, you've got to wait until the middle of July before we see a real significant pullback from this kind of heat and humidity. There will be dips in the temperatures. There will be at least a couple of storm chances, small ones that may afford some temporary relief. But when you look at the big picture here, we may not see a real break from this type of warm weather pattern until the middle of July. So settle in, buckle down. Here we go. Summer is definitely getting back on track. It's the first time 
time we've had the 90 degree reading here in 10 days. It's the 11th of the season and it's hot and it's humid to go along with it. You can see the humidity out there. A temperature at 89, a dew point at 74. That number has come up. So today's temperature reaches the 11th 90 degree day of the year. That's the most so early in a year since 2012. Remember how many 90 degree days we had that season over 50 and the heat index this afternoon that's spiking as well. This is where the trouble gets in. This is where we get into trouble in terms of giving you the advisories, letting you know to slow down. These numbers right now are higher than that of Miami, Florida. So that means combined with the temperature, that dew point produces a heat index of 103 in Lafayette, and it's likely to stay above 100 for the heat index on Saturday afternoon as well as Sunday afternoon. So just because the advisory is out until 8 p.m. Saturday, I caution you to take it easy on Sunday as well. The hot weather has spread north and east. The hot dome or upper level high just puts a capping feature on the atmosphere so the air is sinking. And like any other gas, when it compresses, and that's what's happening with the air sinking, it's heating up. And look at this. This is pretty impressive here. It's not even July, and we've got nearly, if not over, a 20 different states under some form of warm weather advisory, which includes these areas shaded in pink as excessive heat warnings, heat advisories in central Indiana. That runs through 8 p.m. Saturday, but again, Saturday's heat index will likely top out 100 to 105 and maybe a smidge higher in some spots. And we certainly feel that on Sunday that heat index could potentially also be back up to 100 to 105 as well. The thunderstorm threat that comes in on Sunday, Sunday night is more likely when it will occur is going to be late enough that will sit underneath this hot weather and the front isn't going to have a lot of energy, but it does offer up a chance to bring down some of the humidity slightly Monday, Tuesday and into the 4th of July. But the hot dome will expand, so this is a big protective ridge in the atmosphere of warm weather and lacking rainfall as well. So where is the rain at? It's not going to happen until maybe Sunday night, and we will pick up a few scattered showers and thunderstorms, but that would happen most likely Sunday night into Monday morning. So the entire weekend will be spent with sunshine, hazy sunshine, hot and humid. Chances for scattered showers and thunderstorms could show up here of any significance, perhaps Sunday night into Monday morning. So we've moved up the coverage on Monday to about 30%, and even for the 4th of July, rain chances look to be minimal. Rain chances Chances are minimal because of this upper level high pressure that will stay with us perhaps all the way into next weekend. So hot temperatures are coming. Pretty typical summer sizzle as well. A stuffy 73 degree low temperature. It will be muggly for the foreseeable future. There may be a slight pullback behind that front Sunday, Monday in the humidity, but overall it stays pretty warm with high temperatures climbing back into the mid 90s from the 4th of July into next weekend. All right, Brian, thank you. Coming up at 6, a murder-suicide investigation on the city's northeast side. Tonight, what police know about the two people found dead inside an apartment. And big changes coming to IMPD. The department replacing a wave of officers who are on their way out. How it's working to bring more men and women in to keep you safe. Nick? They're a big part of 4th of July celebrations. Now experts are warning about the impacts fireworks can have on our nation's heroes. I'm Nick McGill, we'll have that story coming up.
Well, a million dollar fountain paid for with tax money is out of commission. It's only been working for a year now. Well, that was fast. Yeah. My goodness. Well, the fountain outside the state house was part of Indiana's bicentennial during 2016. Well, tonight, Fox 59's Randy Smith shows us the problems. It's an unexpected, unfortunate circumstance for sure. And we know that there are people who are regular visitors to the campus who are disappointed. Just west of the Indiana State House sits Bicentennial Plaza. In the middle of all of it, 56 water fountain heads that this summer just sit there. The idea is that when the fountain is working, it's a piece almost of public art for the general public to enjoy. It's scheduled to run during the six warmest months of the year. It opened in the end of the fall of 2016 and during the summer of last year. But the motors to operate the million dollar fountain and colorful lights with it are broken after the drainage system didn't work as planned. In February of 2018, a weather event damaged some of the underground equipment, so we haven't been able to open it this year. When it reopens will depend on when a solution is found. Estimates are it will cost the state another $92,000 to repair the system and prevent it from breaking again. Right now we're working with the outside contractor and the designer who helped to put together this project to determine the best comprehensive overall solution to make sure that we have a complete holistic approach. Another expense that will likely come from the state. Once we have all of that figured out, um, the handling of the price tag then could come from general funds essentially out of the state budget. I don't believe it would take any additional effort on the part of legislators to make that happen. Randy Spieth, Fox 59 News. Now the fountain at Bicentennial Plaza opened in the fall of 2016 and only ran for a few days before closing up for the winter. We begin the news at six o'clock with breaking news still developing at this hour. A woman and child are dead here on the city's northeast side. Right now, police say it appears to be.